is a part of you that fear the Lord. So fruitful shall your love become. Your children flourish like the olive plants wherever all you want. St. Genevieve. We're grateful for your presence and participation at this Mass. We'd like to extend a hand of welcome, especially to any of our guests. In order to respect the dignity and solemnity of today's celebration and to ensure a space for worship and prayer, please turn off or put into silent mode all electronic devices. Our opening song this morning can be found in our gather hymnal, number 537. Please don't forget that our pancake breakfast put on by our Knights of Columbus will be happening this morning after our 8 o'clock mass until 1030 in the school cafeteria. Please join us. Our mass times for All Saints Day on November 1st will be at 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. All Saints Day will be a holy day of obligation this year. We have reached out to many of you here with an invitation to join us as our parish will offer a memorial mass for your loved one who has passed away this past year. If you have received a letter from us and will be able to join us, please call the office this week to confirm. Thank you. As we begin our celebration, let us stand and join in the opening hymn, sing a new song, number 537, and gather. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Amen. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, though whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord.
his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. Lord, glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring gifts and enter His courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Among the nations, the Lord is He. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing, brothers and sisters, loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, 
Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. So I came upon this uh, statistical uh, data concerning a product called uh, Coca-Cola uh, recently. And uh, the data says that uh, as of 2022, which is last year, as of 2000, 2022, about 97% of the world's population have heard about Coca-Cola. And that about 72% have encountered a Coca-Cola product, whether it's a Coca-Cola bottle or can, and about 51% of the world's population have tried a Coca-Cola product in some way or form. And to think that all of these Coca-Colas achieve when it is only a, a, a product that has been in existence for probably a little over 100 years. And then there was an added comment to it that if God has only used Coca-Cola to fulfill his mission of evangelization, his work would have been completed by today. And so, unfortunately, or sadly, uh, that would have been a great idea, but sadly, the fact that each year we set aside a Sunday in October to celebrate what we call World Mission Sunday reveals to us and reminds us that the mission that God has given to us still remains unfulfilled or incomplete. And so today, this Sunday, we celebrate World Mission Sunday. And I think that there's an underlying invitation here for each one of us to kind of revisit this idea of mission and to revisit the idea that each one of us, you and I, are called to be missionaries. Uh, this is rooted from the fact that the Second Vatican Council has come to recognize that the church is missionary in nature. And this doctrine goes all the way back to the day of ascension, when our Lord Jesus, as he was about to ascend back to heaven, gave to his apostles the great commission or the great mandate to go out and make disciples of all nations, or to go out and tell the good news. And the apostles received that, and from that time when the apostles started establishing the early Christian communities that would have become the first churches of the Catholic faith, until us today, this has been the heartbeat of the church's life and work, the mission to go out and tell the good news. And when we look at mission through that lens, then we will come to realize that when we talk about the church's mission, that it is not just simply about us leaving our homes to go to foreign countries to proclaim the good news. Nor is it just about inviting a priest or religious from, other, from those who are doing foreign mission to come to us in mission appeals to speak about their, their missionary work and for us to respond by supporting them financially. When we look at the definition of mission that way, that that only probably comprises about 30 to 40 percent of what a full definition of the church's mission is. Because now in this day and age, when we think about a church's mission, the mission field has now become local for us. The mission field is now in our neighborhoods, in our city, in our diocese, in our state, and in our nation. And the people that we need to speak to when it comes to preaching the gospel are the people who are here around us, maybe even people that we have come to know who are now disconnected from God or may not even know the necessity of God in their lives. And it is up to you and to me as members of the Church of Christ to be the missionaries to fulfill this mission of our Lord. And this is probably why the church has chosen as the co-patrons for the missions and for missionaries two different saints, St. Francis Xavier and St. Therese of Lisieux. Two different saints that came from totally different lives and totally different backgrounds. But each one of them can show us what the church's mission truly is. St. Francis Xavier, we come to know that he, he went visit or he went travel from country to country to preach the gospel. And therefore he kind of shows us this traditional meaning of mission. But St. Therese is a totally different game because St. Therese, if we knew her story, she never even left her town. Probably she spent most of her life or the rest of her life 
living in her own convent, and yet she became a patroness of missionaries. And how is this happened to be? It's because St. Therese, even though she wanted to go to the mission, but she knew that she could not. But what she came to realize is that if she could not go out there to preach the good news, she can bring the good news to where she is. And she can preach the good news to the people that she will encounter around her. And that's what she did. She preached the good news to her sisters in the convent and to the people that have come to visit her. And St. Therese's version of mission is probably the one that's most relevant to each one of us today. Because I think that when we are invited to rethink this, this calling for each one of us to be missionaries, that we do not have to leave our homes to go to a different country to proclaim the good news. But rather we do it here where we are. And we bring the good news to us, to around us. Now it's us who will be used by the Lord for people to bring to us and preach the good news, preach the gospel to them. And we preach the good news in our own personal and unique way. And St. Therese can teach us a thing or two about this because I think that when we think about us as missionaries in that way, it brings to the forefront for each one of us probably one of the greatest resistance that we have when it comes to being missionaries. That I feel like I can be a missionary only if I am a theological expert or if I am well versed in the philosophical uh, ways of arguing or reasoning. Maybe arguing, we can all know about that, but about uh, these philosophical skills of, of, of reasoning. But what St. Therese can teach us is that actually when we tell others about the good news, we do not win them over. That that's not the way we lead them to an encounter with Christ, when we tell them what the good news is. Rather, it's when we let our lives be the gospel that others need to see, that they will come to realize the necessity of Christ in their lives, and they would want to have him, they would want to have an encounter with him. That is why our own lives are probably the most powerful tool for each one of us, because it is when we show them with our lives and how we live that we can experience greater things when we are rooted in, in, in this relationship with God, that people would want that that people would come to know that. And this is why I'm always, I always love this a story that, uh, about Mahatma Gandhi and his encounter with Christian missionaries in India. At some point in their encounter, the missionaries asked him, what is the secret for him that he was able to draw millions of people to follow his advocacy of nonviolence? What led them to want to live, embrace that thinking in their lives? And Mahatma Gandhi's response was very simple. My life is my message. And then he went to teach them, these Christian missionaries, about the apostolate of the rose. And what he was telling here is that the rose does not preach. All it does is it just stands there and it radiates its beauty. And people see this beauty and they want to come close to it. They are drawn to it. They want to receive that. They want to take that beauty in the rose. It does not say anything, but its beauty draws them to it. And what he's telling the missionaries is that you don't have to be a preacher. You don't even have to have the skills of a preacher. But when your life radiates Christ to others, they will be drawn to you and they would want to have what you have and turn to God in an encounter with him. And I think that for, for many times uh, when I was younger, that kind of was a resistance for me, but I learned to appreciate that. Because for me, when I started my journey as, uh, into the priesthood, I started with a missionary order in the Philippines. But I came to realize that I am very introverted and I don't like talking to strangers and therefore I left that missionary order and I decided I'm just gonna minister to the people around me in the Philippines because I'm not good or I don't like, to, I don't like talking to strangers. And yet God really has a sense of humor because even though I left that, he still brought me to a foreign country. And here I am uh, preaching in front of you. But what I learned to appreciate about that is that even in my own little and maybe and even imperfect ways, God has learned to use that to draw others to an encounter with him. And I think that that's what we celebrate today is all about. It's a reminder for you and me 
that the lives that we have are the most powerful tools, the most powerful means for God to draw others to Him. And that when we are willing to let our lives be the gospel that others can see, then you and I can lead others to an encounter with Him and fulfill the mission that Christ has began from the beginning. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When our risen Savior ascended into heaven, angels reminded his disciples that he would come back again. Until he comes, we continue his work by praying for all peoples and their needs. That the church on earth will ever keep to its evangelical mission of making disciples of all nations, let us pray to the Lord. That the leaders of the world may realize that they must give an account of their work to Jesus Christ when he returns as our judge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may all come to the maturity of faith in the fullness of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all our dead may ascend to glory with Christ our priest and king. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, your Son is now seated at your right hand, enthroned in eternal glory. We make our petitions through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in singing an offertory song. They'll know we are Christians, number 735, and I gather him, number 735. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. Praise to the 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. 
together with Francis R. Pope, Mario R. Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Genevieve, and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace on our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those joining us on social media, please pray with me in active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Join me in singing our communion song, Let Us Be Bread. It's number 816 in our gathering, 816.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have one personal favor to ask from you. Uh, please keep me in your prayers this week. I will be leaving uh, this afternoon for my annual retreat, so I'll be away for a week to just spend time with the Lord. So please pray for me and some of the other priests in our diocese will be entering into retreat time uh, this week. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Closing song is City of God, number 678, and gather 678. Awake from the summer, the rise of your 